Shalom from Jerusalem. This is day 297 against a war against uh, the terrorist group in Gaza, terrorist group in Lebanon, Hezbollah, the terrorist group in Yemen, Houthis, and indirectly uh, fighting against Iran and as well as other little, well, not little, but terrorist groups within Judea and Samaria. The big news here is the 12 children that were killed by the terrorist group Hezbollah in Lebanon. As you can see here, the picture of all these kids, 12 kids, and here is the funeral. This is a local newspaper. There's a picture of the mothers and the 12 kids. And uh, it's, a, it's a big deal. And here's a picture. I wanted to show you this right here. This is a picture of Lebanon and all the color, colored parts are all Lebanon. This big area right here is Syria and this bluish, light bluish color is Israel. And the yellow stain right here is Majd al-Shams. Majd al-Shams is the Jews town that was, that was where the, this um, missile attack occurred. What happened was that for several nights, a few nights ago, uh, Hezbollah was launching several missiles across into the northern part of Israel. And uh, then they wanted to hit the um, army base up in the Golan Heights. And one of the missiles hit Majda Shams and it hit, it landed in a soccer field and killed 12 children. There's still no condemnation from the international community. No word from anybody, uh, you know, condemning what happening against these kids. This one right here, he's the 12th kid that was identified dead. The missile attacked him directly. So he was, they had to identify him by the DNA because since the missile hit him directly, his pieces were all over the place. Sorry to say it this way, but that's the truth. And um, here's when the missile landed in the, the soccer field and the children started running. And this is a family members crying for what happened. Here's some showing some damages, pictures of some of the damages that were caused by this missile. And here's the fence around the soccer field. More damage done around the area. And here's the funeral of this community, the Druze community, which you can find part in Lebanon, part in Syria, and part in Israel, like I showed you on the map. But this is a very tight, very unified community and they've been calling out to the Israeli government to respond and Bibi Netanyahu has already visited them the, the visited the Jewish community and has said that his uh, their answer was going to be soon and harsh and these are all the kids that were killed these kids were playing soccer in the soccer field and the, Unfortunately, these 12 kids were killed and uh, there's 30 kids hospitalized and we hope that they will survive, make it through. But this is terrible. 12 kids in all. And then this one coming up is the one that I was telling you about. The 12 kid that was identified. Disaster in Masjid al -Shams. This is the big news over here. And I'm trying to figure out where the condemnation, if the condemnation against this attack, against these kids is going to come. When Israel was accused of hitting a hospital or killing children, the condemnation without any verification was quick against Israel. Later, they found out that Israel hadn't done any of these 
killings and they were all done by the terrorist group Hamas themselves and yet the condemnation was quick and harsh for something that they didn't do. So the flights are all canceled going in and out of uh, Lebanon. Um, the many countries have asked Israel not to respond yet, not to attack Israel and not to attack Lebanon until they are able to uh, evacuate all their citizens. And uh, the United States is urging Israel not to retaliate. You know, they should be supporting Israel. The uh, administration from Joe Biden should be supporting Israel in this situation, but instead they're urging Israel not to retaliate. Which country wouldn't retaliate if they would be attacked this way? Israel actually went to Le uh, a war with Lebanon for a situation not as harsh as this, as the killing of 12 kids. I think it was one or two people that were killed and Israel went into war for that. And that was back uh, quite a few years ago. And, um, you know, this this attack is by the terrorist group Hezbollah, which is a terrorist group that has a lot of say in the government of Lebanon. They have a lot of money because they're supported by Iran, who gives them money and weapons. And where does the money come from? Well, President Joe Biden has given them billions of dollars uh, in, hoping, in hoping that they will use it wisely, wisely. And I have a few notes here. Hezbollah says that they have 150,000 missiles ready to be launched to Israel. And uh, so Iran has threatened that if Israel retaliates and attacks Lebanon, then they will also respond harshly through, maybe directly, but for sure indirectly using their proxy terrorist groups like Hamas, Hezbollah, the Houthis, and several groups in Syria and Iraq. Also, Turkey has threatened to invade Israel, just like they did when they invaded Syria and they invaded Cyprus. They themselves have said this. And this is a NATO um, member threatening to uh, invade Israel. So, remember, reminding you that there's still 115 hostages, 115 hostages, some dead, but many alive, we hope. And uh, so we need to pray that we can get them back home safely soon. And uh, there is no chance of ceasefire right now because Israel wants their hostages back and they want to finish off Hamas. And Hamas insists that, they, they, uh, that Israel withdraw from Israel completely. And um, so that's a, the situation here. And so I ask for prayer for this situation because this is going to escalate and become possibly a major war up in a, here in the north. And who knows how many people, how many other countries will join against Israel. But also we pray uh, for those nations that have gone against Israel in Europe and in South America. And if... Israel keeps acting the way they have against Israel. We need to pray for that as well. So until here, I'll leave you. Shalom, shalom from Jerusalem.